I'm here talking to you about projects that we can enjoy while we're watching our favorite sports teams or just watching a great movie on TV. So that's what we will be talking about today. And I also wanted to show you a few projects that our wonderful knitters here at Alpaca Direct have brought in for me to share with you today. And as I'm going along, if you have any questions at all, make sure that you ask them and I can answer them if I as I go or I can find the answer out for you. Let us know where you're from and what you're working on and we love looking at your projects. So please continue to post all of those, that's wonderful. And the winner um, for last week won this lovely Kabasi Plus, or excuse me, not Kabasi, it's regular Kabasi. And the winner won this and the prize for this week is, where is it? Um, I thought I had it in here and oh I know what it is it's a Lamar and it's in two skeins of the sweet potato colorway so this is Lamar and the sweet potato colorway is kind of an orange color I didn't um, pick that up to show it to you but it is absolutely beautiful and the reason why I chose that color was because I thought it was fantastic it reminded me of Thanksgiving actually <laughs> so anyways and I love the Lamar so Hopefully whoever wins that can enjoy making something lovely out of that. Now you know the way to win is to go ahead and post your projects, let us know what you're working on and maybe where you're from or any ideas that you have and you'll be entered to win. So that's how you do that. And if you like what you're watching, please be sure to share with your friends. That always helps us get more people out there that we are learning from and that we can hopefully impart some wisdom to them as well. So, and don't forget to push that like button. So, as I'm going along here, now I have a lot of things to show today. And the first thing that I wanted to talk about was this Simply Stripes cowl. And it is knit with a lovely Lamar. Remember I told you this yarn, how much I like it. And Angie was kind enough to share with us. And if you look at it, it's absolutely beautiful. And it is... Super easy knitting, definitely a project you can work on while you're watching your sports fan shows or whatever you're watching. And beautiful project. What I liked about this project is the new skill that you would learn on this is when you're done with the cowl, you have to join the ends together. It was made with a provisional cast on and then you do Kitchener stitch in the round. And I actually had someone this last week ask me about how is the Kitchener stitch in the round different than the Kitchener stitch in stockinette. So of course I went to Knit Pearl Hunter because Michelle Hunter is a fabulous teacher and she always gives us great videos on different things. So I went to her video for the Kitchener stitch in the round and what I found the difference was, was that you didn't have to do that setup round. You remember the two stitch setup round that we usually do for Kitchener stitch? You did not have to do that. What she did instead is on those first two stitches, she put safety pin markers, the little green colored markers that we usually have. They come in different colors. Um, and she marked each of those stitches. So when she came back around, to, she treated those as the last two stitches of the Kitchener by picking up those actual markers and working that darning needle right into it in the same exact pattern as we would use for our flat Kitchener stitch in stockinette. So that was fabulous. So that was interesting. So I liked um, that project. Another project that I was gonna talk about was our sock yarn monkey. And this one is was knit by Terry. She's one of our knitting knitters and it's called the Sock Yarn Sock Monkey by Linda Carlidge and it's using Cascade Heritage Prints. And Terry made this, and I think it's absolutely darling. She did a great job on it. And um, this little sock monkey pattern, I have also done this one. It is a fabulous pattern. Cute little sock monkey, and you see the back of it. <laughs> super, super cute. And that one's done with Cascade Heritage. Thank you, Terry, for sharing that with us. And the next one that we wanted to talk about is another pattern that um, Terry knit, and she said this bulldog. It is called the English Bulldog by Sally Muir and Joanna Osborne. And this um, was knit on, I don't know what yarn she used with it, but uh, fingering yarn, and it's knit flat and very, very cute. And then they just take the stitches along the back and pull them to make the wrinkles in your little bulldog. But I thought that was a really cute um, pattern that Terry did. And 
So anyway, she said she had a great time with that and it was knit flat. So um, that was awesome. And then I have my team hat and cowl set that is free on Alpaca Direct. And I am just making up a new one of these because we had the one that is in the picture was actually sold to a customer. They wanted it so badly, we ended up selling it to them. So now I am knitting another one and I just did my hat last night and I'll be starting the cowl today. And the hat is very wet, Jim. So can I turn it and you can just, uh, if you can see that. It's very wet, it just got out of the sink. And so it needs to dry. And this is made with the Yarn Warmy by the Al um, Classic Alpaca Yarn Company. And then this is Madeline Tosh, the colorway of Candlewick. And that's another sports team hat that I'm making. And this is the lovely Warmy. It is a merino alpaca. And let's see if there's anything else in here. I've used this several times. Oh, it's 70% baby alpaca, 30% merino wool. And this is a fabulous yarn to work with. I just love it. So soft. Anyway, that was what that was knit out of. And um, like I said, you can get the pattern for the team hat and cowl on our Alpaca Direct Free. And so, anyways, maybe you'll enjoy doing that while you're watching TV. Um, also, remember a while back when I was talking about the sturgeon pattern and we were um, talking about how um, it might be wrinkling on the edges? Here it is. I just did a very quick blocking of this. This is the sturgeon pattern and I still need to do these parts, so I need to pick up the stitches. So I figured I would block it um, lightly and then pick up the stitches so I could see what these edges were gonna do before I get too much further into it. But boy, I think it's turning out really nice, even nicer than I thought it would. So this is knit with the lovely yarn Sueno, and I'm. this is how much I have left of my first skein, and I have another skein that I'm gonna be working with. So I'm gonna do both of those. What I'm gonna do when I knit mine is I'm going to probably knit with the front and back of each of that skein since it's in a cake like that and, and do it at the same time so I can use all the yarn. And I'm gonna do these two at a time um, using the Magic Loop. So that's another good reason to be able to use the Magic Loop, totally wonderful. But Jim, did you show everyone this pattern, how mm -hmm. cute it was? This is a paid for pattern on Alpaca Direct by Nora Gogan, and it's called Sturgeon. And it's knit with the lovely Sueno. Really, really fun project, not too difficult, fairly easy. I like that one. So I'll let you know what it looks like next week when I get the actual rest of that shawl part um, knit on there. This one was called the um, Team Cow Pattern, and um, what it was is, um, when the your team is playing and they win so many points you would knit so many rows and then if the opposing team um, had so many points they would be in a different color so um it could kind of it's kind of like a history of the games of how they did and so anyways i thought this was a cute little cow pattern it was on Scassell's website and um that was a fun project to do uh Okay, so now I'm going to be talking to you about my doll, but what I wanted to show you was these little buttons that are right here. Do you see the little buttons? They're handmade. So I wanted to take one moment and show you how I thought of, um, there. I saw on Michelle Hunter's website, one second, I'm looking for my needles, and she was showing you how to do a bobble. And I thought, I. I kept looking at different ways to do buttons and I did not like the buttons that I saw out there. So I thought, well, what looks most like a, a button? And I thought, well, a bobble is round shaped and it's nice looking. And so I gave that a try and you know, um, it turned out really nice. And you can get different size buttons using different size yarn and different size needles. So this is a sample of what I'm gonna show you. And you see how you have the tail. So you can weave it in on the back of um, your project and actually attach it to your sweater as you're going. So what I did to make this was I did a slip knot, right? And this is using Kabasi Plus. And when you do your slip knot, you don't want it super tight because you have to make five stitches into one stitch, right? So you would 
go ahead, sorry, having te technical difficulties here. So you would knit one, yarn, my tail's in the way, yarn over, tail still in the way, one second, Jim, and knit one, yarn over, and knit one. Now I have five stitches. So this reverse stockinette bobble is where you might think you have to purl back. We actually knit across. So you knit across those five stitches. <clears throat> and then when you're done knitting that, you would go ahead and purl across the five stitches. You're getting a little depth on your actual button here then. So we're gonna go ahead and purl across. And then it's knit two together, knit one, knit two together. So then I'm gonna be doing that. So I'll be doing knit two together, knit one, knit two together, all right? Then you turn it again and you purl three stitches, the last three stitches together. All right, now it's purled together. Then you would take your tail and you have to cut it so that you can thread the yarn through. There you go, you just thread it through, see, and it looks like that. And then what you would do is take a square knot I take that and flip it over there. Then I would switch hands and do another square knot and pull it tight. And see, that's how you get your, your actual button. So there's your finished button. You can make it for your little baby dolls and your grandkids won't have to worry about swallowing anything because you can fasten it very tightly to your garment or sweater that you're making and you have really cute little buttons so I just wanted to share that with you because that was something that I kind of figured out on my own using that lovely YouTube video from Michelle Hunter uh, the knit pearl hunter on reverse stockinette bobble so that's what how I use that to make a button all right hey Kel uh -huh. they wanted to see your scarecrow doll again oh of and, course and... we're gonna go back to the scarecrow so this last week Here's what I did. I had to sew the hair into place. And you can't really see because the part that I sewed is underneath. That You flip the hair, you sew it, you flip the hair to one side, and then you add a whole nother section of hair to make it nice and thick. And so you did that. And then I did little eyelashes. See, she has little eyelashes on her. And... Of course, I finished off the little jacket, and if you take the little jacket off, the jacket is pretty cute. Oh, and I had Ruthie, she's a um, hairdresser. She actually braided my hair for me, and she said I could pull this down this way and make it cuter that way. And so she did the hair, braided the hair for me, and then here's my little jacket again. And this is using the petite panache pattern from Megan Jones. And I just made it a very small version of her pattern, except for I did top down with a provisional cast on and she did bottom up. And I added some bell sleeves to mine and I did the, um, the actual pleats in the back a little bit different. I did it bottom up and then joined the pleats with the three needle bind off. And so, um, that is what I did with that. But she's all done now. And I'm gonna be starting on an, another version. What I'm looking for, and if any of you have this out, out there, or you know where it is, please let me know. I'm looking for flesh tone yarn that is in a worsted weight. So I have some Kabasi Plus that's coming in, um, I, in kind of a peachy color and I'll, I'll let you know what that looks like when I when I get it in it's on order I will um, let you know what that I'll show it to you on the next Facebook live if we have it here in time so I'll show that to you but it's I want to find um, a flesh tone 
yarn for the body of my little girl. And who's that for? Uh, this is for little Evie. <laughs> and I made the long hair on purpose. And the reason why I made that long hair is because I know little girls like to play dress up and play at the hair. So I had to have long hair for her. So They like the jacket and they want to see the pants. Tell you tell about oh, the pants. Oh, these pants are uh, super, super cute. And they are, you, you, uh, here's the little pants. And I did my increases for the legs right on the either side of two stitches. So I would do an increase here and an increase here with two stitches in the middle that stayed the same. And um, that way when I got down here to the bottom, I didn't have to add a bunch of stitches that would cause a hole on either side of the leg because I tried that and I knit that and it didn't look too good. I didn't like it too much. So I like this technique and then I did the little knee patches and I actually changed the bottom to be seed stitch. So it actually matched my jacket better. You see how there's seed stitch in here. So I added seed, seed stitch down here. And here's the back of the pants, what they look like. And these are knit um, in the round all in one piece. Oh, there's a hair stuck on there. Anyway, and they were super, super simple and easy to do. Just by doing however many stitches around that would fit around the waist. And then once you got about uh, inch in then I went ahead and did a few short rows on the back side of the butt so it brought the back side of the pants up a little bit so I didn't want um, it to I wanted it to be more like normal pants you know and then I started my increases for the legs and then on the bottom here I just Kitchenered uh, I think it was like four stitches in the center and then that's all I had to do to close up the legs they were pretty darn tight and with very little uh, mending that needed to be done. So those pants were totally lovely. Anyways, um, so that was that. And oh, 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 oh. So the kibasi, um from last week, it was, um, you remember last week we had this kibasi for the prize for our Facebook Live? Okay, so the winner is Barbara um, Leandez Chin. And I'm sure I'm cruci crucifying that last name. I'm sorry about that. I apologize up front. But it's Barbara Leonides Chin. And you won the kabasi. So all you have to do is give us your address and we can send that out in the mail to you. That's awesome. So go ahead and let us know what your address is and we can send that out in the mail to you. And the Sweet Potato Colorway and Lamar um, is going to be the prize for this week. And of course, this is not the sweet potato colorway because I forgot to grab that yarn to show it to you. <laughs> so what you need to do to enter for the prize today was to post comments in the comment section. Let us know what you're working on and maybe where you're from and make sure to um, let us know what you're working on so we can learn from you too. So also, um, I wanted to share with you all these lovely projects about um, their projects that we can do while we're watching TV or our favorite sports team. And I enjoyed um, looking at these and from my friend uh, Knitters and as well as doing the team hat and cowl set. Um, so I hope that you can share with us what projects that you've made for your sport team events or anything like that that you would love to share. We'd love to hear it. And next week we're going to be demystifying the magic loop method. So we will be talking about different little tips and tricks that you can use to learn how to use do the magic loop more quickly. So that's what we'll be talking about next week. So we will see you next Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. I hope you have a great week.